This is a video solution to the Scrabble board printer task. In this task we must write just this one method named print board, which given a two-dimensional array of characters, prints the board with a border around it. So the board must be printed in this specific format. Before I start writing this method, I'm going to use this test data here just to declare a field that will hold this board so that it will be convenient for me to test this method once I have written it. So let's call this private char array test board equals this board. And let me indent this and I need a semicolon at the end of this declaration. And I can I might as well make this final as well because the test board is not going to change. And then when I uh, need to test this method later, we're going to use this test board. Okay, so the task of printing this board can be split into three separate pieces. One of those is being able to print the horizontal borders at the top and the bottom. One of those is being able to print the rows and one of those is being able to print the individual letters in each row. To start off with, we know that we're going to need to print this horizontal border at the top and the bottom, and I'm going to need to do that twice. So I'm going to write a private method for convenience, and this is going to be called print horizontal border. And this is purely to simplify the task of printing the whole board so that I can call this method twice, once at the start and once at the end of the print board method. And therefore I don't have to duplicate my code. I'm going to start by assuming that the board is 5 by 5 and then I'm going to change my code later to make it work for other sizes of boards. So to start off with this print horizontal border method is just going to print exactly this string. And then in the print board method we're going to print the horizontal border, then we're going to print the rows and then we're going to print the horizontal border again. When we're printing the rows we're going to have to do that for each row in the board array. So I can already write a loop which will run once per row and each row is an array of chars. When we print a row we're going to have to print the left border and we're also going to have to print the right border as well as printing the row. And at this point, I'm going to define a method named print row, just for convenience. And we can see that the print row method, as I've written, it is going to take an array of chars, which is the row. This keeps my print board method simple by having the the low-level work being done by these other methods. When we print a row, what we want to do is print each character of that row with spaces in between. So I want to do something for each character. Let's call this char square in the row. For each square in the row, we want to print the square itself. And we also want to print a space after that square. Now this is not going to work exactly as we want yet. There's going to be a few problems, but we'll write something that allows us to call this method with the test board uh, just so that we can see what those problems are and then fix them gradually. To start off with, I'm going to write a test method. Uh, print test board. And what this is going to do is simply call the print board method with the test board uh, this should be a static field so that I can access it from a static method now when I compile this class I see that there are no syntax errors and let's call the print test board method to make sure that this is uh, doing at least what it should be doing so far so I can at least see that we've printed this horizontal border twice. We've printed the individual letters in the rows with spaces between them, and we have printed these vertical borders next to each of the rows. 
what we want to do is have a new line after each of these rows. So let's change our print board method here so that instead of printing just this end border, that's this symbol here, we want that to be on its own line. So we're going to call print line so that a new line appears after this horizontal border. We can also see that there's a missing space between this left border and the first character where there should be a space between the, the vertical border and the actual squares in the row. So to do that, I'm going to put a space here so that we print a space after the left vertical border. Now when I compile this class and run the print test board method again, I can see that this is now printing the test board correctly. This is sufficient to print a 5x5 five five board, but we want to make sure also that we're printing a board of any size. And we are permitted to assume that the board is square, but I'm not going to make that assumption in my own code here. So my code will actually be slightly more general than the code the task asks me to write. Let's change the size of this test board so that I have a rectangular board. And I'm still going to have a five rows, but let's make it so that there are six columns or seven columns. And to, to have there be seven columns, I need to add these two extra columns to every row. Now when I compile this class and call the print test board, I should see that I've got those two extra columns here, but I also want to make sure that my, that my horizontal border at the start and end of the method will print with the correct number of dashes here. And this number of dashes is equal to two times the width of the board plus one, because for each character in the board, if I've got seven characters in the row, or seven columns in a row. We're going to print seven characters for the columns, but there will be eight spaces because there are spaces between each column, but also spaces between the vertical borders and the row. So therefore, I'm going to need seven dashes to match up with the seven characters in the columns, and then eight more dashes for the spaces. So seven plus eight is two times seven plus one uh, in general. And that means I'm going to need to print the right number of dashes here. So let's first change this so that I'm printing the pluses. And this should not be on a separate line. The first plus should be um, within the same line as the dashes. And now let me write for int i equals 0, i less than 2 times the width of the board plus 1, i plus plus. And at this point, we want to print a dash. And now we need to know this width, and that means that this width will need to be passed into the method as a parameter. And now when we call the print horizontal border method, we're going to need to pass it a width of the board. That means we need to work out the width of the board. So let's do that here. We're going to declare a variable named width so that that can be passed to the print horizontal border method. And the width is the number of elements in the first row or any other row of the board. So I'm going to access the first row of the board and get its length. If we were permitted to, uh, since we are permitted to assume that the board is square, then I could simply use board.length here, but I'd rather use board index zero dot length to actually get the length of a row rather than the number of rows. This way I will have a slightly more general method that will work for a rectangular board that's not square. If I compile this, I'm expecting to see the correct number of dashes when I call the print test board method. And now I can see that this number of dashes is correct. Let's test the original test board data again so that we can see that the correct number of dashes is being printed in more than one case. When I compile this code and call the print test board method again, I can see that the correct number of dashes is being printed here as well. So this is a complete solution to the Scrabble board printer task. This is not the only way of solving this. Um, I've written some extra methods just so that my print board method is a bit shorter and easier to understand. It's not strictly necessary to define these separate methods, print horizontal border and print row. What I could have done when printing the row is just to have this loop inside here so that uh, all of the printing is being done inside this loop, and now I have a nested loop. Um, this saves me from defining this extra method print row, 
So let me delete this method and just show that this does work exactly the same way as before. And I can see that the board is printed correctly if I clear this first so that we can be sure that this is what's happening when I'm calling the print test board method. Now I'm confident that this method still does behave correctly. So this is a complete solution to the Scrabble board printer task. Let's end the video here.